Hey traders, this is Paul Robinson here at Daily FX. Welcome to today's session of Becoming a Better Trader. I'm going to talk about using emotions to your benefit, self awareness. Hey, how's it going? Good morning, Lucy. Good morning, Matthias. Greta, how you doing? Uh, it seems like the sound and video is already working. How's it going, Darren? All right, good, good, good. So, before we get started, you guys know the drill. We got to do the risk disclaimers, and then we will move on. Let's see, we got a full house today. Good morning, Paul. All right, so today. Uh, I could have I could have titled this webinar I guess uh, a discussion about self awareness because that's that's really what it uh, what we're what it boils down to uh, but, you know there's the old the old cliche saying right don't trade with emotion that's a uh, that's something that that you'll read anywhere and everywhere uh, don't trade with emotion which it's really uh, it, it's not realistic uh, unless you're unless you're a machine. Uh, while it's true that we do want to reduce emotion in our trading, uh, we we don't want to eliminate it, and and it's not possible, right? We're not machines. Uh, we are people, and we're fickle uh, with how our brains work. And the the biggest enemy in trading is not the market, it's yourself. And any of you who have been doing this for any length of time, uh, you probably have already uh, experienced that and will agree 100% with me on that. Uh, we aren't robots, so we shouldn't try to trade like one. Unless you're unless you're an algo trader who has uh, designed a, an algorithmic uh, trading program that uh, is 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 supposed to just do the trading uh, for you, uh, which m the majority of traders are not, uh, then you shouldn't try to trade like a robot. You shouldn't try to ignore or suppress uh, the emotions that you have. Uh, we do need hard, fast, and rules to follow. So while we're we're not algorithmic traders. We're not uh, we're not programming the specifics of our trades uh, into any uh, particular programs to have them done for us. Uh, we still need to have uh, we we still need to have rules in place. Uh, but we can use we can use positive and negative emotions to our benefit. Right? We'll talk about. There's really a couple of core ones uh, that we're going to discuss today. But the the key in, in doing all of this and making and making this work for you and making emotions work for you is self awareness. First of all, knowing and acknowledging that you uh, you have certain things going on in your head that that impact your uh, decision making process. Uh, so uh, again, you know, rules in a trading plan will reduce emotional conflicts. We talk about. Uh, having a trading plan, it's it's imperative that you have one. Uh, here's I'm just going to drop a link in here. I'm going to do that from time to time. Uh, I just dropped a link in the general chat box uh, that is about trading plans, so you can go back and and take a look at that and and how to build a trading plan. Uh, but a trading plan will will certainly help reduce emotional conflicts uh, and it'll produce stronger positive emotions such as conviction. And confidence, right? Which is absolutely paramount uh, to trading success. So first, you must we must set ourselves up to have a clear head, uh, as clear a head as possible. So that's that's the whole point of having, you know, some rules and parameters in place, and and having your game plan. Uh, and, you know, and these are the things that we talk about. In, the, in that webinar uh, regarding the trading plan, I'm not going to go into detail on these because that's uh, it's a topic of, of another discussion. But uh, you want know, to you want to have the types of analysis markets you will focus on, your favorite trade setups and time frame. This is what produces conviction, right? Is having is having those favorite trade setups and knowing which ones. Uh, and we'll talk about it a little bit more here in a second, but knowing those that that, that make you uh, have that confidence 
uh, to be able to execute trades properly. Uh, risk management, which is a huge source of emotional swings. Uh, obviously, when, when you trade too big, uh, you, you tend to uh, make more mistakes. Uh, and if you trade too small, then you're not always necessarily engaged in your trading and, and you can be, become a little sloppy. Uh, obviously, in your trading plan, you want to be able to have uh, handling adversity and success and in routine procedures stay focused and on track. I highly recommend, you know, for, for going into detail on these, uh, taking a look at that, that previous webinar. Uh, and, and checking out the, the various facets that are, are imperative to having uh, in a trading plan. So we want to we want to use our emotions to our advantage, right? We have certain feelings for a reason, fight or flight. Uh, it, it, something is causing it, and uh, you know it's. I don't want to go off too far off on the. Uh, off the topic here, but you know the whole fight or flight thing I, I, it, it's somewhat amusing when you really think about it because you think about why we have fight or flight and you know, it goes all the way back to the early days of of man and and having to uh, fight off uh, saber tooth tigers and stuff and we have these responses to uh, various threats and, and and it's funny because when you get involved in things like trading where you, obviously you're not going to be uh, mauled by a, a thousand pound beast we still have these these fears and these anxieties that are, that are actually not all that unsimilar uh, although you, you're, you're probably not going to think you're going to die from a trade uh, at least I hope not uh, <laughs> But something is, is causing, uh, it, it causes you to feel certain things. That's a no-brainer, right? Uh, and, and on each one of these slides down, I'm gonna, I have in the corner self-awareness. And that was kind of a last-minute thing because that's what this all comes down to, right, is, is being self-aware, understanding that you're thinking or feeling a certain way at a certain time because of certain things that are going on. And then, and then being able to connect the dots between the cause and, and why it's happening, right? So you need to understand why you're feeling a certain way. You have to ask yourself questions. You know, why, why, are certain, why am I thinking this way? What's, what's going on here that's causing, uh, causing me to react to the market in a certain way? Uh, fear and nervousness. Right, so fear is is obviously something that uh, can can really shackle a trader uh, because it, it it prevents you from taking trades that you should be taking, and it it prevents you from uh, it it causes you to mismanage trades. And you have to ask yourself, why am I why am I fearful? Why am I nervous? Well, what's what's going on that that's causing this? Right, again, self awareness. And say, hey, you know what? Uh, why why does this particular trade seem a little scary, or what? You know, what what's going on here? And and uh, one of the number one causes of fear, uh, as I already uh, alluded to a few minutes ago, uh, you have to ask yourself: Is is my trading size too big? Uh, everybody wants to everybody wants to kill it, and everybody wants to do it overnight, right? Everybody wants to to make a lot of money, and they want to do it today. Uh, and and then it causes you to you know to maybe put on too much risk, and paradoxically you know it, it's it's actually trading smaller is the better is, is the easier path towards producing those those uh, end results that you're looking for, uh, not trading bigger. Uh, trading bigger just causes all kinds of uh, sloppy mistakes. I, I can tell you from experience that there have been times where the market's been very good and I've done I've done well, uh, but when I look back, I would have did a lot better had I traded smaller size because I ended up churning uh, positions, you know, where you get in and then and then you get out of some, and then you get in and some, and then you get out of some, and then you get in and some, and then by the time the you know whatever it is that you're long or short moves to its target you you know you, you make money but then you realize that you, you did a lot of sloppy things along the way because you were trading too big uh, to begin with and you would have been better off just having a smaller amount of uh, trade size and and just seeing the trade work out and, and, and not being fearful the whole time not being in a in, a, in that kind of clutch state uh, you know and if you're a day trader and you're, you're or you're trading very short term 
you, know, you might even find yourself kind of kind of clenching up at times right you, you'll, you'll realize that like you're you're kind of uh, you, you, if you think about how you, you maybe even postured at your desk you'll find yourself kind of hunched over and and clenched up and you know it, it it's one of those things that I've I being on a trading desk and having spent many years you know you could you could walk into a room and you could if the market's really moving around you could see who's you know, who's on edge and who's not on edge and the person probably isn't even aware of it uh, but they'll be sitting real close to their screen almost like they want to start clutching the screens and uh, and so you know one thing that and if you find yourself doing that is you know you say wow why, why am I all tensed up and, and why do I have my face three inches from the screen uh, it's probably because you got too much trading size on uh, that's you know so a simple solution to that is uh, is to reduce your trading size and uh, and and it, it really I mean it's I, I don't want to oversimplify it but it, it really is it does come down to that and uh, and, and recently uh, I, I can't recall who it was exactly I was in a conversation with a few people and and, and uh, the guy said that you know, he, he did acknowledge he's been doing this a long time and he said yeah I, I, I do my best when I'm when I'm trading small uh, not when I'm out trying to kill it so one way to ease fear and nervousness is to simply re reduce your trading size but you got to be able to you got to you got to understand that that's where that that fear is coming from and sometimes it's it's not about trading size right sometimes it's about having the wrong trade on do you have the right trade on uh, if you if you are in a trade and let's say you have small trading size or normal trading size and and you're and you're not feeling uh, very uh, you're feeling kind of nervous uh, you you might be doing something that you shouldn't be doing right might be uh, you might be in a trade that that you really shouldn't be in and and that's that's where having that game plan and we talk about this all the time. And this, you know, we talk about it every week. Uh, having that game plan and having that trading plan in place because it, it it keeps you keeps you focused on the right trades. So a lot of times, fear you know, you get into a trade and you and you're and you're like, oh man, I'm kind of kind of on edge. You know, you keep checking your screen and you're and you're not really sure if it's if it's going to work or not. And and it, you know, a real simple solution that is is when in doubt, get out. Uh, and so you need to make sure that you have the right trade on and and also another thing and I, and I do stress this frequently is that wrong and losing are not synonymous so you can be you, you can you can lose so you have good trades and you have bad trades good trades are those that fit within your trading plan have good trading size uh, good risk parameters all around and they could be a, a loser right and they can hit your stop because that's just part of trading and just as right and winning are not either are also not synonymous because you could have a bad trade on trade you shouldn't be in in the first place it could end up being a winner uh, so you know that that's something I always I always like to, to, to stress to people is that uh, winning and losing and good and bad trades are not uh, interchangeable uh, you have to kind of keep that in mind uh, but really the, the big thing about you know, understanding your fear is, is it, to me, it comes down to trading size, and it comes down to uh, it comes down to having the right trades on. So, again, self awareness. Uh, another reason why we get fearful is is that we've had a bad run of trading, right? We we start to lose confidence. Confidence gets diminished uh, when you have a drawdown, and so then all trades start to look scary. You, know, you get to one of those points where you know, you've had numerous losers in a row, and you're, you know the the losses are starting to accumulate, and it, it seems like maybe maybe no trades look good to you anymore. Excuse me, there. I had to take a drink of coffee. Uh, so all trades are scary, right? And and this is telling you something. It's telling you that that if if you're looking, if you're looking at the market and you're saying, you know what, this trade setup looks really good, but I can't seem to pull the trigger. I'm having a hard time you know, even thinking about getting into the trade. It's telling you that you, that you probably need to take a break, 
right? You need to take a break. It doesn't mean you need to take a break for a month, uh, you know, a few days, uh, even a couple of days. And we, we've discussed this recently. Uh, you know, taking those little breaks can can really do wonders for your psyche. Uh, so if you're having a hard time and you're recognizing this again, self awareness. I'm gonna say it like 40 more times during this webinar because it it's it's really very important to understand uh, you know what's going on as you're doing things and and it it is a there is a fine uh, fine line between self awareness and overthinking. Uh, but and it's something that I think with time uh, you get better at doing. Uh, you know, so you're you're, you're be yourself aware, but you're also uh, you know not overthinking things too much. It's kind of a you know, something that you can't really can't really teach. You kind of gotta kind of gotta go through it and you, you gain it as you go. Uh, but but getting back to this. You, if you, if you really are having a hard time taking any trade uh, correctly, uh, even with small size, you need to take a break, um, and th this will prevent from having a damaging drawdown. I consider uh, we go through drawdowns all the time as traders, right? And you have two or three trades in a row that are losers. You even have one trade, one single trade, is is a drawdown, right? Because you're you you've lost money and you're off the previous peak in your in terms of your uh, account balance. So we go through drawdowns all the time, right? It's the damaging drawdowns that we want to prevent and of course we want to prevent ruin, which is which is a zero balance, right? So if if you're having a real hard time uh you you got to just you got to step away, get out of the fire, uh if you will. Uh, and 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 then it allows for you to you know a little rest and recuperation allows you to mentally uh, uh, kind of repair yourself. Uh, I know that when I when I'm not feeling when I'm not feeling it, uh, and I have trades on and, and I just close them out and I say you know what I'm not feeling it, I immediately feel better, uh, and and I'm and I'm confident that you will too if you're going through one of these situations where you know you're just having a hard time. Uh, and and then you identify your problems, and we've talked about that before, uh, in in terms of identifying your problems, and then not you know not trying to tackle them all at once. So you want to try to fix them one at a time. Uh, and then when you return to trading, you want to do it with inconsequential trading size, so you can find your confidence through good winning trades, right? So you know if this is if this is the situation. Uh, then, then you need to, uh, then you need to, uh, you got to find your, you got to find your swing again. You got to find your balance. Uh, so, with that said, uh, you know, get out of the fire and find your balance again. When fear uh, is is become, you know, paralyzing. Now, this is the other, this is the other core one, right? Conviction and excitement, right? This is something that you want to feel on every single trade. Every single trade, right? You should be, when you go to enter a trade, you should be excited, right? You should say to yourself, wow, this looks like a really good opportunity here, right? You shouldn't, you shouldn't be approaching it apprehensively going well I think maybe this is going to work out and you know this is kind of here and 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 this you know maybe this support is here or resistance or whatever it is uh, you want to feel this on every single trade right so if you're not feeling excited about a trade then then it's probably you probably shouldn't be in the trade right so I I, I know that when I feel good about a trade I know that my chances of, of having success on that uh, trade are, are much higher. So you, you ask yourself, am I excited about this opportunity? Am I willing to lose money on this opportunity? Uh, is this something that if it hits my stop loss, will I will I be okay with it? And if if you have a resounding yes, right? You have a resounding yes. I should take the question mark out of there because it's not a you know, yes. It's a, it's a yes. Uh, then it's time to trade, and you're you're likely taking a trade that's within your your game plan, uh, and and again, this is where your your best chance of success lies. So you want to make sure. I I always it, it's it's kind of like the the final ingredient for any trade that I get into, 
is is I see the setup. I have you know certain levels maybe get hit or or you know maybe a candlestick forms and 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 I've got a couple other things uh, lining up or or what have you. Uh, it, it, it then the the final ingredient is to uh, to to is to is that excitement. You're right. So the, that's kind of like the that's like the unspoken uh, parameter uh, that that you know everything lines up and you should feel excited. All right, and if you don't, then then what's going on there? Uh, and then that's what we're going to talk about here in a second. Um, and Tony brings up, uh, he says, "What if I'm excited and then it's near my stop? I get a I get a great risk reward if I enter it again now." You know, actually, George Soros, uh, in in his book Alchemy of Finance. Uh, and I'll give a Snickers bar out to anybody who finishes it. <laughs> Don't hold me to that. And the reason I say that is because I've I've read it a couple of times, and 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 I've always recommended it to people. But it's it's not the easiest read because George Soros is, uh, he's not a writer. Uh, while he's he's a brilliant man, he's not a writer, and and it's not the easiest book. But anyways, uh, Soros talks about how when a position would get near his his stop point. Uh, he would he would actually add into the trade knowing that if it stopped out he had a, a small amount he was going to lose on that additional uh, piece that he added in but if it works out then he's got a he's got a, a nice asymmetrical uh, uh, risk reward profile uh, so just to kind of go off on that Tony um, now if if you're not feeling conviction and you're not feeling excitement right and you're like no uh then then you probably you probably aren't in the right trade uh, and and Luca I'm gonna get to that here in about a second as you can see from the slide uh, timely timely question uh, then you probably aren't in the right trade right you're probably not looking at the right opportunity if you're not excited about the opportunity, it's probably not the right one. Uh, even you know, it, 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 it to me, it's it's really you know, as a discretionary trader, uh, you know, you've got to listen to your 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 gut a little bit and and say, okay, you know what? I mean, I I, I know that that if something is setting up and and I'm not feeling excited about it, I'm probably probably not in the right trade. Uh, and and in that case, trading less is better, which is usually the case all the time, right? Over trading is is kind of a it's a very common mistake that traders make. Uh, and actually, we did a webinar recently. We talked about over trading. Over trading is is uh, it's hard to uh, it can be hard to do uh, to not over trade, especially if you're a very short term trader and there's all kinds of wiggle room going on and 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 things are moving around and bouncing around and and, and you're tempted to trade and and so you know, but trading less is better. Uh, and so if you don't have conviction and that's one thing if you find yourself over trading you probably have a lot of trades where you're taking where you're not really all that convinced that you should be in it uh, you just you just think maybe you should be in it right now this is when problems arise when a trade setup does fit your criteria then why no conviction all right so if everything is is lining up uh, then why don't you have why don't you have conviction and and there may be factors either in the market or within yourself that are preventing you from feeling excited about a trade right it could be it could be market related it could be too volatile or not your type right that 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 happens uh, you know, I have I have a friend that he doesn't he does well when the market is calmer and when things get wild uh, he gets a little wild and, and he doesn't doesn't do that well and so nothing really gets him excited, even even when things do kind of line up, because the volatility is is not something that that he's uh, he, he likes, right? He thrives in a lower volatility environment, and and a lot of traders will thrive in a higher volatility environment, like a real high volatile environment. Uh, and and in, in that case, then obviously you want to be trading, but you know there might be you know he might be a someone who who tends to take uh, back and forth meter version range type trades and the market's trending 
all right? And so all of a sudden you get a trade that's kind of fitting in your parameters and, and perhaps uh, you're not feeling a lot of conviction and, and then you, you recognize that, that it has to do with, you know, with the market. But there's other, there's other reasons, right? Like you're just not feeling it, okay? And if, if, you're, if you're not feeling it, and, and Lucas says, what, what can you do if you have depression and you cannot trust your emotions since they are all, always mostly negative? Well, the, the simple solution right there is, is that you really have got to, at that point, you know, you don't trade, right? You're not feeling it. And that's, that's what I mean by that. Like you're just, you're just not feeling it. You know, it's just, it, it could be something that's going on in your personal life. Uh, we all got stuff that goes on that, that, you know, I, that we're always in a, you know, we could be in a kind of a, could be happy people, but we could be in a state of flux. Life is always very dynamic, and sometimes, sometimes you're just not feeling it. You know, maybe maybe you're having a bad run of sleep, uh, which I certainly know about, and, and sometimes you're just not feeling it. And the best thing you can do there, you, you just you've got to acknowledge, okay, I'm not feeling it. Um, there's no no sense in making no no sense in making matters worse. Uh, because the market is not going to be there for you to, uh, it's, it's the worst place to try to make yourself feel better. Uh, and I know this from experience and I've, and I've been around it enough where people try to, try to kind of, you know, find some, some way to, to make themselves feel better. And, and so they'll, they'll try to use the market as, as that way to do it. And, the market's a cold mechanism, uh, and so in that case, you you just really don't want to trade, and you've got to get to the root of what's causing, you know, and perhaps it's just a some passing situation, uh, and you're what you're best to do uh, is to just to to deal with that whatever it is to deal with that first, and then and then trade. Uh, trading when you're not in the right mindset is is a recipe for uh, further frustration, you know, and just more negative feelings. So, I, I always advise that if you're again, as we talked about earlier, if you're having a really tough time and, and you know your your trading is struggling and just you know just generally not feeling well, uh, that you need to just take a break. Uh, there's nothing wrong with taking a break, and you know what, the market will be there tomorrow. Uh, it'll be there next week. It'll be there next month. I had this. I always had this problem. Uh, earlier on in my career is that I never wanted to step away from the market and I actually went like a very long time without even taking a vacation because I didn't want to I didn't want to miss the opportunity and I always thought oh you know what it could become a very expensive time off uh, if if I if I don't step away if I step away you know I'm gonna miss opportunity and it's just gonna my vacation's gonna price is gonna compound because I'm gonna miss all this opportunity and and I learned as I got older that uh, and I got more experience that that you really uh, that that's kind of an irrational thought. Uh, Paul says, "I find that life often mirrors the charts. We go back and forth in a similar manner. It, it's that's true. Uh, you know, if it's it's and I recently in a recent webinar I I said." You know, there's this old saying that if you want to find out a lot, if you want to really find out who you are uh, and find out about yourself, become a trader. Because <laughs> because there's no place I can't think of too many uh, other endeavors that make you face uh, who you are and how you think and and your your emotional makeup, your I not your IQ but your EQ, uh, make you. Uh, Find out more about yourself as a person than than trading because you're always you're always faced with uh, you know making decisions and 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 acting in a manner which uh, you know is is disciplined and and uh, being emotionally intelligent and so it's uh, it's one of those things where you know you just you have to you have to really uh, you know if you're if you're struggling step away. I can't stress that enough, uh, and, and and it's it's hard to do. Like I said, you know, even even uh, even when you're doing well, it's sometimes it's a good idea to take a break, right? It's sometimes when you're doing well, it's a good idea to just even for a day uh, to kind of keep yourself uh, checks and balances, right? And and that's what we're going to talk about coming up here now. Feeling greedy, overconfident, right? 
feeling greedy, overconfident, like you only want to make big winning trades, right? So this happens, and so the good news, right? The good news is that you're doing well. Uh, the bad news is that if you're not careful, you're 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 probably going to slip up, and you might slip up in a, in a pretty big way. Uh, but if you get that feeling, and, and I've I've had it, we've all had it, where you, know, you you start doing well, and then all of a sudden it's like the only trades that you want to take, the only trades you want to take are those that are going to pay you, uh, pay you out large sums of money. Uh, and, and large sums of money is you know relative to every individual and the size of their trading account. But you know it, it, when you get to that point where you find yourself just being you know very aggressive and and uh, and and you're only willing to accept big winners. Uh, you know yeah you're, you it means you probably have been doing well, but it, it means that you're probably about to get kicked in the head, uh, to put it bluntly, uh, and and you'll end up in a drawdown. So you know, anytime, and it's very. This is this is one of the harder. Uh, this is one of the harder places to to step away, or to to keep yourself in check, right? Because things are going well, and when things are going well, people people lose self awareness, right? Because why do you need to be self aware when you're making money, right? There, you really, it doesn't doesn't you know on the surface you say, well, why do I need to be careful? Uh, you need to be careful because because after every good period of trading comes a bad period, and uh, you can you can make that prematurely happen uh, by by becoming overconfident, not realizing it, and then you know you start increasing your trading size. You know you start you know, you're you're risking one percent on a trade, and all of a sudden you're risking five percent on a trade, and it won't take you very long to wipe out the good things that you just did. Uh, so that's one of those things where you know uh, you, you've got to be really, really uh, cognizant of, of what's going on, and 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 I've you know the the best traders I've seen and been around, and and the best times that I've you know where I've actually been the proudest is when I've done really well, and then I start to lose because maybe market conditions change, and then you slow down or you stop. And you say, oh, you know what? Something's changed here. I'm starting to lose money. I'm getting a little sloppy. Maybe I'm starting to trade with too much size, and I've I've had a couple of, you know, big losers. Maybe I maybe I'm I'm getting a little sloppy. Uh, so it's a, it's always a good time uh, to make sure you're using proper trade mechanics, right? You want to make sure that you're you know you're sticking to your stops, targets, good risk management. This is this is where when you get to this point. Risk management seems to kind of go out the window, uh, and you, you know you start thinking, you, you get a little grandiose, and and you think, well, why would I want to win on this trade with this size when when I'm doing so well, and I can win on on a much bigger size? And while it's not a bad idea, and it's actually encouraged uh, to to increase your trading size by a, a marginal amount while you're doing well, because you want to take advantage of that opportunity while it's there. Uh, market conditions are sometimes favorable. Sometimes they're unfavorable for trading, and when they're favorable and you're doing well, you know it's not a bad idea to press uh, and and to try to do a little better. But you, you know you don't want to do anything stupid. Like I said, you know you're risking you know one one amount on trades and doing well, and then all of a sudden you increase it five, ten times because you know well I want to you know I want to kill it. I want to make only big trades, and so you want to make sure that that you're uh, you know you're sticking to good trade setups. I've talked about this before. Uh, it was the, using a checklist. You know, it's 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 something that that you can do physically, you can do mentally. Uh, this, you know, even going back to earlier when we were talking about uh, earlier on in the webinar, uh, and we were talking about fear and and what have you. Uh, it doesn't really matter whether you're in a fearful state or whether you're in a you know in a greedy state or or what have you. Uh, having a checklist, and I just dropped the link in there for the webinar on that. Having a checklist, whether it's physical, you, know, you have a spreadsheet or or something of that nature that that you check off the criteria for a trade, uh, that can also help you uh, overcome fear as well. Uh, I should have probably put that in there earlier. Uh, if you have a checklist that says, hey, you know what, I've I've got these five criteria uh, that I look for, and four of them are 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 matched, uh, I feel good about this trade. You know, and, and I think sometimes you can talk yourself 
in and out of a trade. So that's, you know, again, self-awareness. Uh, I, I always recommend self-talk uh, as well. Uh, and so, you know, if, if, you're, if you're talking to yourself, if you're self-aware, then you're able to, uh, you, you, can, you can talk yourself into trades and talk yourself out of trades. Uh, it happens all the time for me. You know, I'd say, oh, you know what, I, I, think, I think this is probably going to happen and I've got maybe one or two things. And, and then I say, but you know what, I don't, the risk reward doesn't make any sense. So just because you think it's going to work out, maybe uh, the risk reward is not worth it. So then you don't take the trade, right? So same thing when you're getting overconfident and if you've got a checklist and, and you feel yourself about to get into a, a, a trade and, and then you see that you know, you're perhaps taking a trade that doesn't really even check off many of the boxes, uh, you know, then it'll help keep you, uh, keep you centered. Uh, and so I mean, they're, they're simple little steps. I know they're not easy to follow and, and they're very easy to override. Uh, and, and, but, and, and I could do a webinar on discipline. I, I don't even know how I would go about doing that uh, because discipline is not really something uh, that, that's easily, easily teachable. Uh, each person has their own uh, threshold for, for discipline and, and being able to do it. I, I always think of uh, if I if I had to use points on, on how to instill discipline, I would say probably I would think about the downside of, so we use risk reward when we put on trades, right? We say, well, we can lose uh, X percent to maybe gain, uh, you know, twice as much, for example, on a, on a one to two. You, know, you, you can do the same thing with certain things that you do, certain actions you take. You can say, well, what's the risk reward <laughs> mentally on doing this? Uh, you know, if you're a very short-term trader, having having bad Fridays uh, and, and letting things get out of control on a Friday, you know, you can say, well, I don't want to ruin my weekend. Uh, you know, things like, you know, you say, what's the risk reward uh, mentally of, of doing this? And, and I think that, you know, risk reward is, it can be applied in that way as well uh, and keeping yourself disciplined. Uh, I, I, I think that would probably be my best thing, my best advice for, for discipline is just, well, what's the downside if I'm not disciplined, you know, and, and do I really want to deal with that? All right, so to summarize, right, it, it all starts with self-awareness again. <laughs> uh, self-awareness uh, is, is very key. Um, I, I think that, that, you know, it's something... Uh, if, if you want to read, I think Stoic philosophy. Uh, there's lots of books on you know, the Stoic philosophy. Uh, is is one that that is and even you know looking at Zen and and whatnot. Uh, if you're looking outside of the markets and looking outside of you know, uh, you know listening to me talk about these types of things, if you want to go away from the market, I think even reading things uh, you know along the lines of Stoic philosophy and and, and Zen and whatnot. Uh, there, it's all about self-awareness. I think that that can be helpful uh, for those of you who like to, to read that type of stuff. Uh, but you know, it, it, being you got to be self-aware, right? You've got to and, and self-awareness. You know, it, it, you can do it through a conversation with yourself. You can say, well, what's going on right here at this time, and 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 why is this happening, and why am I thinking this way, and and then you're able to. Uh, what you're able to do then is you're able to, to match the objective, which is the cause, with the subjective, which is the emotion, right? So, you know, there's something that's causing it, right? There's something. And now you, and, and you need to match that up with, with how you're, whatever it is that's impacting your decision making. Uh, and, and by listening to yourself and going through that and always thinking to yourself, okay, why is this happening? Why, you know, you should always constantly be questioning. Right, and, and, and not taking a, an assuming uh, type of mentality, but always questioning, uh, you know, what, what's going on in your head and, and, how, you, uh, and how you're handling it, uh, because it's, it, it, really will, it really will make a difference in understanding your thought process and, and why you make certain decisions and, and, and also understanding in which situations uh, that, that you're more likely to thrive in and which situations you're you're less likely to thrive in and again this stuff that we talked about today you know this is this is stuff that it takes time uh, so don't beat yourself up if 
if you, if you struggle with it, uh, if you if you struggle with being able to 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 kind of you know identify what's going on and be able to remedy the situation, uh, it, it's certainly it's it's a it's a by experience type of thing, not a not a one two three uh, solution. So, all right, guys, I hope you guys have uh, have have taken something from this today that that's uh, a positive. Uh, using emotions to your benefit, uh, it's it's always going to be there. Uh, so it's something that we uh, we have to deal with, uh, and and by he taking it head on and, and not sidestepping, uh, not sidestepping your emotions. All right, we we don't want to deal with them because they're all sticky and gooey, and and maybe they're not even you know it's not. It it some you know, it it can sometimes be viewed as you know it's kind of a trivial topic and it's like well I don't know you know it's like we're talking about emotions all touchy feely but uh, I mean that's what trading is you know I mean it's it really is it's it's less about the X's and O's or the charts than it is about uh, the mental aspect to it all right so that's that's something you always have to keep in mind uh, and. Now, speaking of X's and O's, tomorrow we'll be talking about X's and O's. And next week for the Becoming a Better Trader, I'm going to drop the link in there. You guys can join me tomorrow. We'll talk about charts tomorrow. We'll talk about the stuff that doesn't matter as much <laughs> as the stuff that we talked about today. That's why I love this webinar. Uh, this is my favorite webinar. It's, it, I look forward to it every week. Not that I don't look forward to the charts and stuff, and, and but that's where people get stuck. Everybody wants to look for the, the the solution in the market, the 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 ideal trading strategy. They want to find the ideal analysis, and and that really isn't what it comes down to. Uh, and 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 so tomorrow we'll talk about that stuff. But this is really the more important stuff. Uh, you know, it's it's you got to have you know you got to have good analysis. But you don't have great analysis. You don't you don't have to have a great strategy. You got to have you 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 don't need to be super smart, right? You just need to be adequately intelligent, and you have to have more emotional intelligence. So, but tomorrow we'll we'll definitely look at the charts, uh, and and whatnot. Next week we'll probably do a Q and A for this uh, particular webinar, so you, know, you guys can absorb uh, what what we've discussed here today. And then next week, uh, if you've got some questions you can think about, you know, certainly bring those on in. And uh, and for those of you who've been with me, I you know I I, I pretty much answer all your questions. Uh, at least I do the best I can in doing such. Uh, if you guys want to reach out to me, you can always email me, uh, probinson at dailyfx.com. Uh, questions, comments, concerns, uh, suggestions for future webinars. As some of you are aware, uh, I do listen. And uh, <laughs> I have actually done a couple webinars that were based off of suggestions. Uh, if you guys want to follow me on Twitter, it's at Paul Robinson FX. You can always tweet out to me. Uh, I don't always respond on Twitter. I, you know, Twitter's I'm, I'm kind of kind of sometimes there, sometimes not. Uh, but I hope you guys have enjoyed this today. And uh, I did record this. All right, so the record button was hit. Uh, there will be a a copy of this uh, on YouTube shortly, uh, as well as under my author profile. Uh, you will find all the Becoming a Better Trader webinars have been archived, uh, so you guys can always go back and, and re-listen and, and, and look at uh, you know some of the other ones as well. Uh, so that's it for today. I will uh, hopefully see you guys tomorrow. Have a good one.